Experts are still struggling to clarify what happened at Fukushima Daiichi three years after the accident. The plant sent radioactive substances into the air above northeastern Japan. Many experts maintain that happened after hydrogen explosions. But as we hear on the latest Nuclear Watch, some have another story. NHK World's Ken Ichiro Okamoto reports. Our investigation brought us to this radiation monitoring post in Fukushima Prefecture. It's located 5.6 kilometers from the nuclear plant. The data recorded here after the nuclear accident contained some surprising information. This map shows the dispersion of radioactive cesium based on data collected after the accident. And here's the detailed data from the monitoring post. It shows a clear spike in radiation levels at 2.40 p.m. What's surprising about this surge is that it happened almost one hour before the first hydrogen explosion. And it followed a crucial operation at Fukushima Daiichi. At that time, a buildup of steam caused pressure to rise dramatically inside the reactor containment vessels. Their structural integrity was at risk. Shortly after 2 p.m., engineers opened valves to decrease the pressure in reactor 1 through a process called venting. TEPCO officials explained the amount of radioactive particles released into the atmosphere would be limited. There's water under the reactors. The steam released during venting will pass through it, so even if there are any radioactive particles, the amount that comes out will be very low. Here's how TEPCO described the venting process at that time. The steam building up inside the reactors would pass through a water tunnel. The water was supposed to act as a filter that would capture radioactive particles. Nuclear engineers believed this system could limit radioactive emissions to 0.1%. The data we recovered from the monitoring post clearly contradicts this explanation. So we asked scientists to verify the 0.1% theory and see if the venting itself could have released more radiation than expected. This institute in northern Italy specializes in testing nuclear plant safety equipment. It agreed to recreate the conditions of the venting system at Fukushima Daiichi. The first experiment consisted in passing steam through water at a normal temperature. The steam was immediately cooled, creating bubbles that disappeared almost instantly. It means most radioactive particles would also have been trapped in the water. This simulation was consistent with the 0.1% theory. But experts who analyzed the nuclear accident believe the situation inside the reactors was different. They say some of the steam generated by the meltdown had interacted with the water before the venting. I think the water temperature was already quite high at that point. In the second experiment, the temperature was raised in the upper layer of water. The influx of steam generated a large amount of bubbles that rose all the way up to the surface. This would have allowed radioactive particles to escape. The result of the second experiment indicates that up to 50% of radioactive elements could have been released into the atmosphere. That's 500 times higher than the previous simulation. 
our investigation has shown that crucial safety features can fail to perform as expected. It also reminds us that our understanding of what happened inside Fukushima Daiichi remains very limited. Well, TEPCO officials told NHK that they're still trying to find out exactly what happened during the venting process and how much radiation was released as a result.